Morning, YouTubers. What's happening? Scott again, Tidy Bricks. Friday. And we're going to do some nice, easy jobs today. We're going to do some dry stack walling behind me on that thing. Um, yeah, currently working on the patio. Almost finished. Almost, but not quite. So, yeah, nice, easy one today. Right, let me um, spin around and show you what this dry stack walling looks like. Today, we're going to do a bit of dry stack walling. We're going to cover this up with the Marshall's Harvest. Let me show you one. Here we go. Yeah, he's quite nice, isn't he? So this is gonna go up the wall like that. It's gonna go up three courses, and then we've got a nice piece of stone to go on top of it all. So let me spin around and explain. Right, so one of the first things you gotta do, you gotta make sure you've got no bits old bits of cement sticking out like a little bit by there got to get rid of all that stuff because when it goes on it's only it's only adhesive so it needs to be as flat as possible and it can be messy as well so make sure you cover the floor up because if i was to get some of this um adhesive on the tiles it would be a right whore to get rid of so, yeah, I'm going to clear off the rest of this face, cover the floor up, start down that end, and then I'll show you how to do it. Right, so let me show you the stuff I've got to use to actually stick the dry stack wall in on. So we've got the Seeker Primer. All this stuff actually comes with the tile when you buy it. So the Seeker Primer I put into this plastic container there. That gets painted along the wall and gets painted on the back of the tile. Then you use the Seekerflex adhesive sealant to go on the back of that to actually stick it to the wall. So, one either end, one in the middle, one in between there. So you're looking at five. Five squirts going across like that. When you're actually putting it on, don't go any further past this point here. Because when you squeeze it to the wall, the, um, the adhesive will smush down a little bit anyway. So, yeah. Do not hit it with a hammer. Just push it firmly in with your hand and that will suffice. Oh yeah, don't forget the coffee. Numero uno tulio number one -io. So yeah, I'm gonna start over here in the corner. So what I've got to do, they're all pre-cut to this shape already, but I've got a square. I've got to cut this bit off here. So it's nice and flat so it can go into the corner. So I'll chop that one first. Then um, we'll install the first piece. So I got my quarter marked off. So I'm just using, just use my grinder. It's got a porcelain blade on it at the moment, but should be fine. Right, let's pick this up and put it, introduce it. That's a good word to say then. Let's introduce it to the corner. So basically, that is going like that. <laughs> oh, maybe not that one. Maybe I'll have to chop another one. So as you can see, they can be quite temperamental. When you look down at the top, the width, the middle there looks about almost a centimetre, going to about 15 mil. I have seen some of the ones in America and they're about 30 mil thick. They're really, really chunky. But yeah, these can be temperamental. That's why do not hit it with a hammer. Right, let's prime this sucker up and stick it to the wall. Right, so the tile's prepared ready. Now I just gotta get some of this and paint it on the back. Do not put it on too thick, especially with this stuff. Maybe the stuff in the States where it's thicker, it's fine. But because some of these are actually quite thin, see a little gap there? It could actually seep through to the other side if you put it on too thick. Let me spin this round and just check that hasn't seeped through. No, that's fine. But it did go through a little bit by there. So, yeah, this is where you've got to be uh, a little bit careful. Right, let's squirt some. Yeah, so like when I said, 
only go to about there because when you squeeze against the wall it'll push to there so I'll start off in the middle oh with help that's pointing towards the screen wasn't it right I'll wang another one in by there it's actually hard to do look for the telephone and do this right I'll get another one in there on the end and I'll stick one in the middle there Right, okay, so that looks good. So now I've just got to pick it up and introduce it to the wall. And splat. As soon as you do that, that's pretty much it. Just push it nice and firm. Yep, happy days, repeat, repeat, repeat. So yeah, just setting up my corner now, going around. I'll explain a little bit more what I'm doing here first. But my first issue, see the bottom part here? This stone I've just laid. If I go right into the corner, there's a little bit sticking out and it hasn't allowed me to get flush there. So what I'm gonna have to do, is gonna take a little chunk of that out and that'll allow me to push that a little bit closer that way. There we go, chopped a little bit off the bottom of there and that's allowed that corner, the top three, to be a lot tighter. So that was the first little technical bit I had to do. Right, now I'll show you how I'm going to bond this corner. I'm not going to straight joint it. I'm going to cut the joints so they still overlap. So this is what I've managed to do there. It's more of a natural look. The top piece is crossing over, the bottom piece is coming straight through. So yeah, a little bit more of a natural look than just going straight up it because then you'll just have a butt joint and that just looks a bit crap. So yeah, it takes time, but it definitely looks better. Yeah, tricky that. Always tricky to get the first course in. You've got to get it nice and level, and you've got to get them mitres cut as good as possible. In the corners, it ain't too bad. You can just got to butt them up against each other. But then, like I did over there, I had to take a little notch out of the bottom so I could push the top a little bit closer. Right, so I'm going to finish building this corner first, then I'll just do the nice easy bit. So my other tip would be with doing this stuff. I do want to put this one on top of that one because you can possibly, should be able to see it. See the joint here? That's in the old tile. So I do want to keep making that same pattern going all the way up there. So I'm changing over for this piece. I'll put this one on there next. Hopefully it don't fall off. Now at least the joints will be a little bit more random. You've got a joint there, so then this one would go... Hang on, let me flip this thing over. So this one now would go on top of here. Oh, I should point the camera towards what I'm doing, shouldn't I? That'll always help. So the joint now is moved from there. It was there. So if I was to continue doing that pattern, you would see this joint going all the way up there. So I'm changing over by switching the joint over there. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but you can see the gaps. I can see the gaps. Let me go over here. See that gap there? I don't want to keep doing that gap going up in the same place. I want to shift it over. So that's what I'm doing with this bit. So tip of the day, change the bond as often as you can. What I do hate about these things is that it's a losing battle. You can't really flip in, get away from it. It's a pain in the ass.
So when you're selecting your corner to go in next, when you're trying to do the cross cutting like I'm doing, I can see already this one isn't going to match that well because that sticks out there. So take it off. Fine, pick up another one, which I've got this one here. Put that in the same place. Oops, hang on, I'm going to move the camera towards what I'm doing. Right, now that looks better than the previous one. The previous one stuck out. That'll have a bit of stuff on it yet, so that'll bring that out flush. The other one came out further. So yeah, you've got to be selective which, which pieces you're using for your corners. You can buy pre-made corners already, but um, oh, I find they're really temperamental. I prefer to do it myself. So yeah, be very selective on your corners. Do it dry first. If it looks good, then stick it. In between picking your nose and watching this video, press that like button. Bing, bing, bing. Just like that. So yeah, all oh, looks quite nice, doesn't it? But, but, there's always a but. This is one reason I don't really like this stuff. Is because of this. Look at that. Bloody gap. Oh, this might explain it a little bit better. So... From there to there is that much. See, the bottom's flush. Look at the top piece. This tile here is actually about four mil bigger than this section, which really does screw things up. So I've got to faff about now with this bit and see if I can drop that down. But this is one of the reasons I hate this stuff. I really do. If you saw the um, um, video I put up the other day, what was it called? Uh, montage of something beautiful, where I did a bespoke wall in. Similar stuff to this, but it was actually um, Indian sandstone, the edges, which normally get grouted. I use that for a wall, and that's so much better. But yeah, loads more expensive. But yeah, this just so friggin' annoying. Look at it. See the difference in height? The bottom's level. And that's much bigger. And that's giving me a bloody gap here now. Pissing thing. So I just pulled that bottom one off. And I trimmed a bit off there. Hopefully it should go down a bit now. Right, well, let me show you how it went. So I just trimmed a little bit off that just so I could drop it down a bit. But it's a battle. It really is a battle. See, I've still got a little bit but there. But you've just got to know when to give up. Otherwise, every single piece is going to have to be trimmed down when it shouldn't actually have to be trimmed down. It should be perfect every time, but it's not. It drives me insane. So, last piece on the corner there, and look what I've just done. I've knocked the bloody thing over. So, there. Good reason why to cover up, because that would have been an absolute bastard to have cleaned up that. Oh, right, um, best thing for me to do that is just to pick it up and get rid of it. Right, let's prime this wall, get on with it. Like I said earlier, this stuff really pisses me off. Right, my next issue, this top one. Rocky, rocky, rocky. The tile underneath is a full tile. And that's a full tile on top of that one. I gotta trim it anyway because I got similar type joint. But bloody hell, man. Look. Good there. Oh, for fuck's sake! Broken there. <laughs>
So here we go. Here is the dry stack wall in, in harvest. I've tried my best with these corners not to have a straight joint going up it. Bit of cross bonding going on. You only can do so much with this stuff because it's really flimsy. Looks nice though. You know, customer loves it. That's the main thing. For me as a tradesman, laying it drives me pissing insane. So there's my review. A true review, because it is true. It looks good, but it's a pain in the ass. Right, well, you'll be able to see the rest of the video for the rest of it coming soon. Until then, adios amigos. Like and subscribe.